Welcome back to the second half of uh, episode six. I wanted to thank everybody uh, that watches the show, by the way. I meant to do it for the last two weeks running, and I'd forgotten about it. I even meant to do it at the beginning of the show, and I forgot about it again. On Drive-Thru RPG, uh, I have a affiliate account, so if you go on Twitch, AP Gaming Real, and click the button, you'll be followed through to my affiliate, and you can buy stuff. People have bought so much Battletech stuff through my affiliate account that I have no problem in the immediate future picking up Battletech books that I want. Which is great, because I actually need to get the technical manual uh, so that Rad can finally get his Frankenmex, since that's the only place where they talk about how to make Frankenmex. What are you doing? There, You're rubbing your nose in my face? I'm doing... I'm doing... I'm doing... You want to zigzag across the floor and then shuffle in diagonal? <laughs> <laughs> is there no distinction between, like... If you if you have even the slightest amount of modification on your mech, it's it a Frank mech. It's yes. a Frank mech. Okay, yep. there's no like middle ground on yeah, that. Yeah, that's all. correct. So even okay. if you just do a refit kit, it would be just a Frank mech. I mean, with a refit kit, you change it from one model of mech to another. Right. Right. That's not a Frank mech. You'd go right. from a from a six K to a five M or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. A refit kit doesn't say change out this laser and only this laser one time on any map. I just I just think it would be cool to upgrade things like analogous. You know what I mean? Like go from this type of medium laser to this type of medium laser. Not take like one gun system out and mm. put an entire like not take out a laser and put well, in uh, a, a missile. I mean, for balance purposes, it's about weight, heat, and yeah, space. So it's like ER e, ER medium laser or ER uh, pulse medium laser is way more than what regular medium lasers do. Yes, that's the thing about it. So if we wanted to put an ER medium laser on something, we would have to drop like some either like a heat sink or some armor in order to balance it out. Sure. So what we need is the old mechware four style mech lab. Yeah. Where we can <laughs> drag and drop. That's just, what I'm talking just about. Drag and drop and yeah. design our own mechs and. As long as you have Omnimex, where you can literally do exactly that. Well, even when you didn't have Omnimex, you had, you know, you had like this arm, you were capable of mounting this many slots yeah. of laser okay. weapons. Okay, so that's why I'm like saying that. I need to go buy the one yes. Battletech book where those rules are in. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to use all of the affiliate dollars people have had from buying the books that go with this show. Uh, well, thanks, audience. Thanks, we've for, sold, thanks for that. We've sold thanks dozens of copies of Total Warfare, A Time of Total uh, War and uh some of the extra books that's awesome especially technical no so thank you guys thank you a lot that's really cool it's a big deal for me mech warrior 3 is great i fucking love mech warrior mm -hmm. 3 sure was amazing it was the 31st century and mankind was once again at war that opening cinematic is easily the best mech warrior cinematic is that mech warrior 3 mercenaries no three. Oh. No, like Mech Warrior 2 Mercenaries had the best in-game moment where during the tutorial, the sergeant guy's like, if you damage my mech, I will fucking destroy you, son. <laughs> <laughs> mech Warrior 2 Mercenaries had a baller soundtrack, too. Yeah, that had a really good one. That was great. Um, not sure if Dude. my microphone picked it up or not, but it appears there's lightning and thunder going on, so yeah, if I disappear... Understood. It's because you're dead Dude. forever. Uh, dead do forever. we know the next contract already? <laughs> yes, you guys picked your next. Well, no, technically you don't until you get to Kukin's Pleasure Pit. Okay. I'd yeah. like to, it, once we do, I'd like to look up the area that we're going to. Draconis Combine. Like the planet and stuff like Rubigan. that. Yeah, area. don't worry. We'll do all that. Okay. Uh, first off, we're doing a scene between Howler and Heavy 7, uh, where Howler just like opens the door as me, like, sir, I'm so sorry. I'm still getting used to being a professional warrior, and I was just chewing some gum to relieve stress. Look, you're doing fine. Okay, I, I those guys still... are idiots. They literally got their sister killed. Oh, is this like flashing back to before, like all the running and like yeah. the rebuilding? Okay, all right. Yes. This is like immediately after his meeting with the uh, yes the commander. Okay, it's even in black and white, just like you. Perfect. To indicate it takes it. place in the past. I feel at home then. Some wavy lines in the beginning, perhaps. Light, light jazz plays as yeah. well, uh, that you would hear in a yeah. New York noir-style detective movie. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what happened, see? <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, it's fine. I was a little tightly wound. I had just got done throwing up everything I ate for the last 48 hours. 
we've well, both you and I have made a lot of progress here in the last couple months. So we don't need that. We don't need that thrown away in some debrief with the commander. So understood. I mean, I've just how been. How did it go? I'm here to hear about how it went. I had to take responsibility for the actions of the member of my unit and also for causing several ruckuses on the bridge lately. Well, heavy is the crown, okay? Being in charge ain't no cakewalk. As far as being on the bridge, I've, I've told both you and Prince on multiple occasions the, dis the distinction between on-duty and off-duty activities. And I'm so really you say that, tired of having to tell you. Yeah, 100% teenage eye roll. <laughs> yeah. Look, you son of a bitch. Sir, it's just very difficult having a relationship with her, okay? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's why you shouldn't date people in the workplace, okay? In the real military, in, in professional armies, they have rules against this sort of situation. But we're a mercenary company. Yes, so we are. Those sorts of things are a little more lax in this sort of environment. But if you continue to, if if I'm not saying it's been problematic, it has. But I'm not saying it's been overly problematic. He's sighing, just like yes, we've just said this before. All right. If it becomes overly problematic, you know that Harridan is going to publish a policy. That would be a problem. Yes. So for your own sake, so. I don't have to say it anymore and you don't have to hear it anymore. You need to sit down with her and y'all need to work out a situation that works for more than just the two of you works for everybody else on this boat. Yes, dad. Okay. He may be, he, what's the line from guardians of the galaxy too? He may be your dad, but he, he <laughs> may be your dad. pop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not your dad, but I am your daddy. <laughs> not your is. father. No, I'm not your father, but I am your daddy. All right. Other than that, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> did she I'm seem really, Did she seem I'm pleased really. with your performance overall? Oh well, you know, <laughs> in general, when I'm with Melissa, it's, okay, oh, well, oh, you mean Crystal, uh, it, it, the commander? <laughs> I fucking bite my lip, and I'm like, I'm gonna fucking hit you! I swear to God, <laughs> you're not my child, and it will not be child abuse if you walk out of this room with a busted lip. <laughs> I'm working on it, sir. I've got an exercise plan laid out. I'm gonna break Shinji and Tachi down and build them back up. Good. We're the trying command? to think of some really, really bad nicknames. I'm hoping that the Russians can come up with some new call signs. I have every faith in Pavel to deliver. Uh, look, the commander loves courses of action. She loves to see shit on paper. She wants to. She wants to see things make sense and follow a progression. And if you give that, give her what she wants, she'll be pleased as pie. You could. You know firsthand that. Uh, since I've been dancing to her tune, I've had a total changeover in her opinion of me. So I need you to do the same. I need you to just give her what she wants so that we can all move on and be one big fucking happy family like Bandito wants us to be. Are we doing this for Bandito, sir? Look, <laughs> let... I never want to be Rich, more. I like never want to be more clear bitch. that I'm about to attempt to be. We don't do anything for Bandito. <laughs> <laughs> we do things with Bandito sometimes. We do things to Bandito at sometimes. <laughs> but we don't do things for Bandito. Bandito is our. Okay, he's he's. He's our peer, and he kind of chokes on that word a little bit. He's like, he is our peer, and uh, he deserves the respect due to a man of his station. Sounds like but, all the struggle for you. <laughs> we don't... We're, we're, we're doing this for the good of the unit. Sir, I've heard this one before. I, I understand. All right. Good. I'm tired of saying it. <laughs> Fuck that guy, all right? <laughs> do it do it because it's supposed to be done, goddammit. <laughs> Understood. So he pulls right. out his MP3 player and starts his training crown track, which starts with the man song from Mulan. Perfect. 
let's get down to business. <laughs> to business. Yeah, exactly. Right. And he, he's just like, man, I've never had to run. All right. How do you do this? <laughs> how do you run? How, how do you run? McGurk is just like, just fucking try and keep up. It's like walking. But so like on, on day one, McGurk leads the run. And that's after that, uh, Crossroads takes over. But And I run them. I, I run them until they're just garbage. Nothing left of them. All right. Uh, any and other I, scenes? I I purposefully do it um, to make sure that Howler gets wiped out too, right? Because like, I also I want everybody to see. Look, everybody's got limits. Everybody breaks down. We're all in this together, except for McGurk. He never breaks down. He has no limits, and he's better than all of you. Like, I want that to be a clear message by the end of the run. <laughs> I feel like that's a sign that's overhead that they all have to like <laughs> tap as they run underneath it. I am number one. All others are two McGurk or lower. Yeah. I'll never be as good as McGurk. They all pat, they all pat the, the motivational sign as they go for their run. Uh, any other scenes before you guys arrive at Kukin's? I think it's just mostly Bandito making sure Herodin doesn't run into my, many things. Okay. Uh, when you're... Whenever Bandito's around, I deliberately run into as many things as possible. I mean, to the point, it was just like, you do actually it. not all that bad. <laughs> When you know, it's more pain to you than it is to me, so it's okay. When you arrive at Kukins, they uh, transfer over your new cargo pod containing one Warhammer 2C. Containing uh, 75 tons of purified water. <laughs> and 80, you're given your, your new contract, uh, contract number two, which is an objective raid against something called Ruby Tech on planet Rubigen, Draconis Combine. Uh, the target is Ruby Tech Orbital Facility in Mew City. And uh, the client is on planet in Kukins. Uh, he claims to be an agent of the Jarl of the planet of Altenmark. Uh, if you want to know more, you can go and meet with them. Uh, there's also a mech yard here that is waiting for you. Like, they've sent an invitation when you arrive. As soon as you are in orbit, uh, you, get, you get, like, a business contact as a C-ranked mercenary unit they're sending a personal representative just in case you want to buy a mech or something you know we have many mechs for you to purchase come look at our wares i want to I'm bring very anxious to see these wares i want to bring howler with us all right uh <laughs> when you arrive in system all of you and get Baron. you get 11 weeks worth of messages yeah. dumped on you all at once oh jeez all of your Comstar messages have no mention of the clans. Anything clan related comes from things that have been hand transmitted by drop ships uh, traveling the jump ship route, or from Kukin's Pleasure Pit, where a lot of people are talking about getting jobs taking down the clans. Uh, there are a number of people that send messages to the drop ship inquiring about Comstar and all the problems, but uh, after you detach from your Federated Commonwealth drop jump ship, it immediately jumps back out again uh, with the two drop ships still attached, and you and the Grave Walkers uh, make your slow way down to the planet. Goodbye, Bondsmen. Yeah, they're gone. I thought they killed themselves. Or no, was it no. That was no, that was the Comstar agents. Yeah. The Comstar? Oh. Yes. The Loki agents. Yeah. No, the Comstar yeah. agents. No. Uh, so most of what you guys get is oh, wait, just rom, not Loki. What yeah, rom. Uh, most of you just get general, you know, spam mail. Deathwish, however, uh, you have a message, a priority one message, uh, which is extremely expensive, costs thousands of sea bills to send, from your brother-in-law. Well, I imagine it. I just imagine Harry and it's like, oh, I got a priority message. That must be. Uh. open <laughs> congratulations not only have i married your sister but you're an uncle now maxwell and i'm naming the kid after you is this like an audio thing <laughs> no it's video oh oh it's video even yes. better <laughs> it's live like they have no it's not no there's no way it's live it's, like it's, video message, it's right? me baron hopman blake marsden now uh your brother-in-law just wanted to let you know there's a healthy baby boy on the way. He'll be here in about six months. 
You missed the wedding while you were away, but uh, from what I understand from my Loki contacts, you've been doing quite well out there for yourself. Make sure you come back alive. I want you to be the godfather of this child. In the background, like, uh, Butch McGurk is, like, bebopping his way down, like, to, to Prostitute Planet. And he looks over to the right, and he sees, like, the Baron's face on the screen. And he just immediately starts to walk backwards out of the frame. I'm just patting, I'm just patting hair on the back. It's all and right. And then after, buddy. like, 30 seconds, he shows up again and just, like, puts a beer, like, in front of Harrodin, like, hands it to him without a word, and then bebops down the ramp to Prostitute Planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all right, buddy. Oh, I would be watching the the message by myself. Like, oh, would you? Okay. <laughs> you... Come on, you've seen any military movie ever, including Starship Troopers. Everyone in your unit will somehow end there. up with all of your personal <laughs> messages. I mean, you guys hacked into my personal messages before. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's yes, true. We did. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Only once that you know of. Uh, what do you guys want to do on planet first? prostitute okay yeah you go and have <laughs> i would like to check my message uh, actually i want i want to cut to that i want to cut to that uh do? before everybody no before everybody gets off the dropship as it's landing uh the commander goes over the one mc channel and it's just like now i want you to be very clear here <laughs> general order number one this is a one-time thing but you have all worked extremely hard on a very deadly mission We've mostly come back alive, and you've all stayed and signed on for the next campaign. And so the first round and the first partner tonight is on the unit. You can charge it to the dropship. Remember to act responsibly and don't dishonor the color black. It's very strange. <laughs> I'll be keeping an eye on you, Pavel. <laughs> Loft out. Uh, uh, yeah. No, we don't need to cut to you with your prostitute. All right, good. <laughs> I'm expanding my venereal disease repertoire. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. Probably go gambling first thing if we're not going to go to the mechs right away. Okay. Excellent. I'm glad that you're going gambling. Are you taking anyone with you? Does anybody want to go with? I'm going to be taking, um, looking at my messages first before doing anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's mostly just spam mail. You get a couple more messages, um, revolving around your, your family's missing status. Mm -hmm. Comstar keeps updating you that, uh, they disappeared in the periphery and that they still haven't been found every three months. But that they're okay. looking for them. Anything from sister that's in no. the... No. Gee, if only you hadn't killed that one guy. <laughs> no, I don't listen. So when you're getting off the dropship, Rapier slaps you on the back and is like, Did you ever talk to that feller from the Draconis Combine, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. I sent him your way. That that Malthus folk. Apparently, he's a member of the Lyran crime family. He was all the criminal organizations in clan territory are working together to form a resistance organization. He has this wow. joke about breaking legs that he yeah, likes big to do. fella <laughs> said he was looking wow. forward to meeting you. I was too busy um, fixing a pirate on the battlefield. Oh, oh, well, that's too yeah. bad. They said they had information about your family. Uh, you lying. I really should have said something earlier, but, you know, I figured you would have mentioned it over the next five weeks if it was important. So, anyway, I'm going to go get my whore. See you later. <laughs> Before you, you said they had information about my family. Yeah. Uh, do you know who they, um, who was their fam uh, head of the fam there? Oh, well, I mean, there's a ton of house mouthless agents on this planet. It's a gambling prostitution planet. I'm sure you can just contact somebody. Hey, don't you have a death mark from the house mouthless on you? Yes, I do. I think we all do, actually. That's I, a serious I, problem I, for you. Anyway, I'm I out. Commit, I, I, I have a friend I can make a call, see if I can get that removed. I, you know, I really don't think... I don't think it's a <laughs> good idea. He just friend. looks at you and he's just like, man, I'm glad I don't have my rocket launcher on me or I might do something really bad. <laughs> nah, he used to be a, he used to be a message runner. 
that's all there used to be. <laughs> he way. just starts walking away. <laughs> He's like, I'll see you at your funeral. <laughs> <laughs> hey, message runners don't used to do anything really criminal. All right, Harry, how about you? You want to join me for some gambling? You look like you can use a couple of beers. <clears throat> Maybe we can find some place with some shine for you. I should probably catch up on the pa- on some paperwork before we start in on the new mission. Go go on, go ahead, have fun. You sure? I will. Yes, it'll be fine. Yeah. If you join me, I'll help you on the paperwork. Size, I can probably wouldn't even be able to see the cards from that distance, anyways. You know? I got your reading your glasses. poor vision is not that bad. <laughs> I'm in a he's over exaggerating like for me. Oh my yeah, god, I'm, I'm over exaggerating like <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> you walk around like blind guy McSqueezy. You're like, where is everyone? <laughs> All right, uh, if you say so. Uh, Bandito, was it you and Goldstagger going? I know it was me. I don't know about Goldstag. I think I probably want Goldstag to come with me to not get into any underground affairs. Now yeah. I think about it. I'll uh, play being babysitter. Being the freaking gambling and prostitution planet, it's probably run by the freaking criminal underground. I, okay, so uh, you immediately, you know, head into some gambling place. After a few hours, the two of you end up at a Baccarat table with a guy who's got a fedora and... Uh, and a leather trench coat who approaches you and says, Gentlemen, you are Mr. Goldthrush, Mr. Gray. Maybe, who's asking? My name is Alexander Fedorov. I am a representative of the Malthus organization. You are aware that men like you are not welcome in an establishment like this. <laughs> no, I wasn't aware. I need you to come with me. The regional head of Malthus organization wishes to speak with you. This is so perfect. Is it? Can I see any of other people arrive? It's, it's like my sixth sense get killing me right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, your sixth sense is suddenly pinging that like half the people in here work for the Malthus organization. You look around and you're like, that bulge is definitely a dude with, with a pistol in the shoulder. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit! Everybody in here has got a weapon. <laughs> Well, I don't think we have any way of backing out of this. And I Your Jason before. Bourne sense is just like, <laughs> shit. There's only like two <laughs> people in here without a gun. That guy's 250 pounds and knows how to handle himself. Mr. Gray, you are looking a little nervous. I do not I... mean to harm you or alarm you in any way. You can trust the word of Alexander Fedorov. I'm a very paranoid man for very many reasons. I see. Might I offer you a drink then? No, I'm good. Are you sure? I'm positive. A man like you, just off the dropship, does not wish to That's drink? That's rude. Uh, you know, I'm on this new diet. Uh, oh, I understand. Yeah. All right, well, if you would just like to come with me so we can settle up your debts. Where's the closest exit? <laughs> I mean, do you just go for the closest exit? It's, it depends on if it's like in decent sight. Yeah, it's not too far away. You this can definitely that, make it. This is that one I... shot all over again. I turn around and shoot them. Well, you're dead. I said, no, it's like you're super fucking dead. <laughs> I kind of look at Goldstag. <laughs> oh boy. Mainly my death. My friend. Just no, it's both our deaths. <laughs> Uh, all right. In the background, a scantily led girl like runs away giggling, and like McGurk chases her with like underwear on his head. <laughs> How did this become an anime? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, for some reason, the whole place becomes a hot springs out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> It's, a, it's the bathhouse episode for some yeah. reason. This parlor is also a bathhouse <laughs> all at the same time. Uh, that would have been Draconis. If There's like happened. a grotto, you know? Well, I guess since, you know... This would be, it would be steam room with the um, Malthus. Turkish steam room, of course. Yeah. Goddamn. I guess since Goldstar's going, I'll go too. Pondo gets his kidney stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's about right. <laughs> 
If I had known that, I, I, I probably wouldn't have. Uh, it's, it's probably Malthus owns all the law, all the casinos, probably. So, uh, you're led to a smoky back room where oh, there's perfect. Uh, a young woman, probably, you know, college age. She's got gigantic drill tail hair uh, that's clearly being held in place by wires and a lot of shampoo uh, and conditioner. Uh, hairspray? Yeah, exactly. Like, I could, I could accidentally light a match and her hair would catch on fire. Exactly, right? yes. Uh, and she's just like, oh, gentlemen, Dr. Goldhirsch, Mr. Gray, welcome. Please sit down. Of course. I just take a seat. My name is Simon Fedorov. I am the head of the Malthus organization for this continent. Uh, essentially, I run the world. I, I and you wander to... into my establishment despite knowing that you have betrayed us on numerous occasions and having killed my second uncle. Uh, if I had known this was your establishment, I wouldn't have walked into it. It might do well in the future for you to just not enter into gambling establishments and you an alliance. I, I don't worry. I have already clocked that into my brain. Understood. And no, Wait, it's. I'm just now making the connections. These are the same guys that we like killed the shit out. Oh, somebody yep. just we lost. We lost yes. Sid. These are the yeah, same guys. These are the that same we... guys. Okay. All right. That's that's. This why... is the mafia guy you kill with your machine gun. Got you. That I killed most of them. Got yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Because of me and my bad rolls, but I've taken account that and I have more advantage this time. No, you're not doing anything. <laughs> I will most likely have to in this game. Uh, I mean, we're both screwed in this situation. Uh, well, yeah, no, yeah, no. I've I've noted I've noted that now to stop all gambling altogether. Now, uh, I just had like I just really really want to just relax and. Uh, I guess there's the wrong thing to relax about. I wouldn't want to get in the way of your relaxation. Uh, uh, but uh, we're actually not here to talk to you. We're here to talk to the doctor. Oh, okay. <laughs> you leave immediately. You're like, all right. <laughs> Is he uh, allowed to leave? Then yeah. If it's just no, it's curious that he would leave a companion in a place he considers such no. an obvious threat. But okay. No, I'll stay. This cowardice is really no surprise to any of us. I, I'm staying. What do you mean, cowardice? No. Oh. You just seem like you have one foot in and out of the door, as they say. Doctor, <clears throat> your family has called in a great deal of favors with the Yakuza and the Draconis Combine in order to have us contact you. You seem to be a very important person to them, which means you are a very important person to the Yakuza, which means you are a very important person to us. Do you know of this clan Smoke Jaguars? Have I heard of them before? Out of character? Wait, I clan mean, smoke, have you? Like clan yeah. clan? Or... Clan Smoke Jaguars, yes. The clan Smoke, have I? I? I mean, have either of you? I don't know that I you mean, have I've been or haven't. this stuff. Is Smoke Jaguar anywhere on that piece of paper? No, probably not. That if the answer, I mean, I honestly don't know. If the answer is no, then you have not heard of them. Okay. I'll, but they do I'll have the word it. clan in front of them, so. Not uh, no of the clans. Not that yeah, particular but, one. No. Maybe. Okay. So, of that particular group, no, I have not heard of them. But the clans. I have had first hand dealings with. I see. Well, it should be no surprise that uh, the clans. Well, how to put this? Hmm. They have your parents. They are something they call bondsmen. Uh, they have been forced to work as mech technicians and have done a lot of work helping out on the planet of Turtle Bay. Your parents, of course, would like you to rescue them at some point, but understand that because you have a panther battle mech, that you will probably not be able to take out an entire regiment of clan warriors by yourself. But that they are doing okay, and that they are being treated more or less like humans. 
to some extent, and that if you could ever get to Turtle Bay, they'd appreciate it, since the Smoke Jaguars used a warship in order to bomb the surface and kill millions of people. Well damn. Looks like... Hmm. Looks like the Titan Stags didn't really survive much to the history. Well, thank you for the information. I will put that to one of my greatest priorities. Understood. Now you can get out of my bar. Thanks. Gladly, let's go. If you are looking for an establishment, I can recommend several to you. Are, are... Well, okay. Thank you. One's not associated with our family. I would hate for you to be accidentally killed. I would hate to be accidentally killed as well. Do not worry. When we come for you, Mr. Gray, you will know it is us. And so will everyone that is viewing your corpse. Thank you very kindly for letting me know. Indeed. You may leave now. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I stand up and give them a courteous bow and walk out. Such a gentleman. You rarely see that nowadays. So I was raised by my mama. All right, what next? Let's go shopping, Max, and then Warren. <laughs> Pretty much Warren, uh, McGurk, and uh, Death Wish about the uh, watch out for Malthus. I feel like when you walk out back through the casino slash bathhouse, McGurk is in the water, like with a girl on his shoulders, like playing chicken with two other girls on <laughs> their shoulders. You know what? I'd leave him be. If he I feel like Rad's been to a spring break at some point. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe just, he's on the girl's shoulders and he's like pushing another girl over. <laughs> you know, it's like man, he just sees McGurk. He's like, you know what? If he gets caught, he gets caught. Let's just get going. I don't know that they know him because when he's dressed in his combat uniform, he has like full helmet. Like, I don't know that. I don't know that they, they've ID'd him. Arthur That's would be able to know, but, I think yeah. we all have the mark. Yeah, I feel like they probably could. You guys spend okay. a huge amount of time together. That's cool. Plus, they could just look us up anytime they probably wanted as well. Mm. They, they probably did. That's how they know your freaking mech company. Yeah, just uh, just no more gambling. Uh. <laughs> oh, in the places that they've not told us about. Goldstack, if anybody asks why I'm always in the damn dropship the entire time, it's because I don't want to get killed. Fair enough. Uh, the local mech manufactory uh, and shipping concern is called Zoidy Minerals. Uh, Zoidy Mineral Concern. And you're assigned a personal agent. Uh, her name is Aileen, and she is just uh, mid-twenties, full of joy to see you. Hi, welcome to uh, Zoidy Mineral Concern. I understand you're looking to buy some battle mechs. We've got several. Unfortunately, most of our lights uh, and and medium mechs have been bought out by locals and other mercenaries, but we have a number of aerospace fighters and heavy and assault mechs ready to go. Uh, exactly what, what are, what we're how about? much do we have after buying the... Uh, 18 about, and 18. change million. 18. Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Now, is there anything you're looking for out of your mechs in particular before I take you down to the lot? And she's got like a triple-sized golf cart that she's loading you guys into. Well, I was hoping for something along the lines of a grasshopper, somewhere along the you know mid, mid to long range with jump jets, or short to mid range. Real hoppy people. I see. Essential. Very hoppy. Our mech bay is a little light on that kind of mech right now. We do have several very interesting battle mechs that are production models and several prototype aerospace fighters. Let's look at the mechs first. Well, have you heard of a Hatamato Chi? Uh, and she drives you up in front of a, a giant mech bay where there's a huge ri ribbony sheet waiting and someone nearby like pulls it and like a five ton sheet slowly falls down and reveals an enormous mech samurai uh standing there this is the htm 27t hatamoto chi 
twin PPCs, case technology. It's just the kind of heavy mech that you're looking for when you want to throw down with your enemies. I don't know if you boys understand what the clans are, but many of the mech and mercenary units on planet have They're very been preparing to deal with the clans. And so the heavy mechs that you can have, the better. Yes, we've faced Very them. familiar with them. Oh, you face the clans. Interesting. Yes. Automata cheese. What is this? He asked, well, uh, I, I chime in there and I'm like, what kind of armament does this uh, mech it's, support? Uh, two PPCs and two SRM6. I can look at the sheet, Pondo. This is okay. in character. I can read oh, the she just went in. She just went through it in character. <laughs> oh, did I miss it? Yes. Oh, I was too busy reading the sheet. I say that anyway. I was, McGurk's not paying attention. She repeats it again, and it's like while she's doing it, he has like a uh, like a syringe of penicillin that he just like slaps into his own butt cheek and gives him a penicillin, gives himself a penicillin shot. And he's like, "Wait, what guns does it have again?" <laughs> they have this guns and that guns. Also, you should be aware that uh, it is rather heavily armed, but very heavily armored. It also has that kind of aesthetic look of a samurai that a lot of buyers really want to go for in Lyran space right now. Right. Okay, that's one. It's very I'm interesting. more of a function of a form. It's ah, a... function over yes. form, I understand. Well, we've got about a dozen other battle mechs. Let me take you to our pride and joy. We were only able to acquire one of these before they were sold out. No one has bought it yet, but that is because we only show it to select clientele. And as a C-ranked unit with Comstar, you are select clientele. This is the Caesar CES-3R heavy battle mech. You say you want... Good speed, we've got it. Goss rifle technology recovered from the Star League, we've got that too. ER PPC, four medium pulse lasers, all in a heavy mech chassis. 70 tons of pure firepower. Does it have jump jets? It does not. And hey, this so is the, you said this is the 3R, the Archangel there he is. Just, just the regular one. Caesar oh. S C E A S A R. C E S C A E S E S A R. Oh. S A R. Okay, it's not popping up from real. Don't mind me. All right, I can see that you're not impressed with it, even though this is a Gauss rifle, and these are not easy to find. Right, that's very impressive. Uh, it is very impressive, but you say Gauss Rifle is not easy to find. That also means that repair parts are also not easy to find. Yes, but let me show you our heaviest mech. Uh, and again, it, she drives the cart, you know, with its electric wine right next door and and it whoosh, falls down. It's a hundred ton mech. You've never seen or heard of this mech before. It looks completely... hundred ton? Yes. This is the Devastator. It just came off of the lot last year. Two Gauss right. rifles, two PPCs, four medium lasers, and an extra light fusion engine. It's not particularly fast, but it is particularly deadly and can fire pretty much for as, as long as you can go. It's got enough firepower and armor, they say, to take out an entire company of light mechs by itself. And how much God. money does this cost? 22.4 million credits. Oh, of course. Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> Gentlemen, before you get too worked up, your unit is backed up as a C-ranked unit by Comstar. If you can't afford to pay the mech up front, which is not unusual, we can offer several payment plans for you. Right. Can you truly say no to this level of firepower and grace? I, I, to be honest, no, we can't. <laughs> well, when is, you is say that, little dollar signs begin appearing overhead. Ching, 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 <laughs> ching, ching, ching. I look at him and say, actually, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Very two different mindsets going through. Is, okay, what, anything else besides those three? Of course. As I mentioned, we have almost a dozen mechs here. <clears throat> I would like to see the entire in available inventory before we make a make a okay. decision. 
Uh, they have the following mechs available. I will send uh, the list in Twitch chat. <laughs> Devastator, scary. <laughs> uh, and they have a Kintaro 2-0. Uh, Wolverine 6K. Uh, C9A Centurion. Stalker 4P. Black Knight 6. Uh, Jagger Mech DD, which is a upgraded recent tech with ultra auto cannons. Which means they can fire twice in a round instead of once. Uh, they have an Axeman 2N, which is an Axeman that's been refit to you have two LRM 15s instead of two, uh, an AC 20. Uh, that's interesting. And they also have a selection of aerospace fighters for when you want to move on to that. Uh, which variant is the, the, the Jager mix? The A or is it the. Uh... JM6 DD. DD. Oh, this is the one with the gray death. Yep, it's the modern rebuilt core. DD. We yeah, just two lost AC, English. Two AC5s, two AC2s, and two medium lasers. Uh, oh, medium pulse lasers. And how much would that one be for? About six million? It uh, says 5.2. But... Yeah, that's for the standard version. The Oh, well, that's right. DD is probably... way, way more than that. So probably about 10 million? Uh, way more. Well, I mean, more like eight, I think. I don't have the sheet in front of me. That's fair. If it's something you want, I can start looking it up. And if they're huh. ultra AC, AC5, is it one or two? They're two. Two. So two, two AC5s, two AC5s. AC10s. Yeah, sorry, AC2s. Uh, let's see here. Sid and Rad need to turn their cameras off. English. I'd say that sector. one's interesting, and then the wow, we snap back into position fast, y'all. We can do this. Caesar is interesting, but the Caesar is a bit more expensive as well. Yes, Caesar's is probably about fast. maybe fourteen million. For some reason, my internet's been going off at four a.m. on the dot. I my think goodness. I'd actually prefer the Caesar over the uh, the Jager or the Devastator, to be honest. I mean, the, the Devastator, Devastator is... is just walking death that you. It's going to be hard to put down, but it's going to be slow as dog shit. I think it's, I mean, it's got ER PPCs, so you don't really need two Gauss rifles, two PPCs. These are PPCs, not ER PPCs, right? Yeah. They're regular PPCs, yes. Yeah. I mean, still. Until we Frankenmech, there will always be PPCs. I don't know, Pondo, do you want to upgrade to a Devastator? <laughs> <laughs> but no jump jets. <laughs> Sure. That, I don't what know sort of, like what sort of credit plan. line do we have available? Uh, I mean, you guys actually have pretty good credit. Uh, you've regularly have, completed mercenary yeah. missions. You're we backed by million. the Lyran Commonwealth, and through that, the Federated Commonwealth. We also still have 18 million, so we could put down a decent down. You payment. do have a debt of like almost 200 million credits, but that's on a 20 year loan. That's normal. Yeah, you know, that's normal. Owning, you know, owing a, a yacht. Yeah. How much do we owe? Before you gentlemen make any decisions, perhaps you'd like to see our aerospace fighters. Are we interested in aerospace fighters? Are you interested in aerospace fighters? I think we, we should are wait. interested in well, aerospace we fighters. Uh, well, we happen to have a pair of Cheetah Recon fighters. While they might be the lightest fighters possible, they can pull 9 Gs. You won't find anything except clan tech that's faster than these things. We also have a Sabre, which is a light air superiority fighter, a prototype of the CSR V-14 Corsair, double heat sinks, twin ER large lasers. We have a squadron of Lucifers. Unless you have a Leopard, you're not going to be able to fit all of these. But these are anti-dropship fighters, very heavily armed, and extremely compatible with bombing technology. LCF R-15s. And we've also got an F-92 prototype Stingray, extremely heavy armament, double heat sinks, paired ER large lasers, and an ER PPC. My god. Anything, will that be good against, uh, we're, I think we're mostly looking for an anti-air. If you're looking for anti-air, you really can't do better than the Corsair. 
How much does that cost? Uh, 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 uh. Probably what? Let's see, the base model Six is 2.2 mil. Yeah, it's going to be way more than the base model because it's the upgraded version. I'd say what? Probably about 5 million, 6 million? Uh, yeah, million? probably about 6 million. Hmm. I don't know. I think we should still wait until maybe after this one job we do. You know, we... you could say that you'd wait, but what if you need aerospace fighters on your next job and you didn't have them? Do you really want to be cursing your luck as bombs drop on your head, wishing that you had an aerospace fighter to call in an airstrike to get these guys off of you? We need, we do need aerospace assets. I mean, that's bitten us in the ass multiple times in the past. When you say that, she turns around and looks at one of the guys that's holding the ropes and is like, got him. I fucking got him. And then turns, turns back, back towards and the I'm camera. Just staring at her. <laughs> no, no, that's well, that's think... anime off camera, main character yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Significant well, PC glance. <clears throat> well, it's either if we get the fighters, we'll have to get something smaller than we couldn't really get the Devastator. That's the problem. If we wanted to. I don't know if we still want to or not. I mean, the Devastator would be nice, but I think that might be something we'd have to work up to. That's fair. Gentlemen, I'm putting together a plan here. And she she pushes over a number on a card. For 32 million sea bills. I'm willing to give you the Devastator, the Corsair, and the Saber. Saber, is that an aerospace fighter? Yes. It's a bomber, right? Uh, no, it's a light air superiority fighter. Oh. Uh, it's just got three medium lasers. I mean, you can put bombs on anything, right? But Sabers are specifically meant to fight other aerospace the fighters because they're fast. Tough, though. Yes. Is 32 million? 32 million. And we could work out some sort of payment plan? Of course. Of course. I mean, Do looking it. at your general level of credit, I was thinking something along the lines of uh, an 8 million C bill payment today, and then 8 million a year for the next three years. If you'd be so kind to give us a moment to discuss. Take your time, please. We would never want to force you into a decision here. Thank Perhaps you. you'd like to go to our craft services table. Certainly. What you got crackers? Uh <laughs> we could order crackers for you. Perhaps you'd like to have a ham on rye or a croissant sandwich or Yeah, it's and crackers. I'll take the croissant. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> and I will start walking towards whatever direction she indicated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's a there's like three other mercenary units that have sent buyers there, uh, including the Gravewalkers captain is there and sees you heavy seven and is like, hey, guy, hey. hello, you should try the crackers, they're delicious. Fuck yeah, that's why I came. That's what I'm about. <laughs> I'm about that cracker life. Captain knows what's up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Crackers aside, I guess we should probably talk about if we want to Whoa. actually go. Th Whoa, sass mouth. Crackers never aside. And I go over there and I grab some crackers. I get a, I get a tube of Ritz crackers or whatever. Now that we <laughs> have like, the crackers, right. I guess we should talk about if we actually want to do this or not. Carry on. It's manageable. <clears throat> Look, this is a, this is different from how what we thought was going to happen. So let's talk about how either of these mechs fit into our lance, if they even fit into our lance. We, we had talked about transitioning to a more mobile battle plan. Uh, it's either like we don't have anything with jump jets at all, yeah. Either the Caesar or the... De like, I feel like the Caesar is just the budget buy for the Devastator, depending on how much you want to spend. Um, they're both less mobile, harder-hitting, uh, medium- to long-range mechs. Uh, so we got to decide how this fits into our play. Uh, Assuming we take another heavy hitter that can stand side by side with our new Warhammer, 
Uh, how does the strategy look when we have two close in tight jumpers and two long range heavy hitters? How does this change our mission profile? Let's see, the Gauss, does the Gauss rifle have a minimum range? It has a minimum range of two. Two? It's there. It's not that bad. Would we adapt more of a wolf pack style attack plan where we all stay tied in close together? Well, generally, the war, our new war amber doesn't worry about range, close range at all. In fact, it has more stuff at close range than it is farther range, but. And the Warhammer is going to be probably our most versatile mech sans jump jets that we have. Yeah, I think I think we make the Warhammer the centerpiece centerpiece to our operational strategy. Your incredibly First, yeah. expensive clan mech is the one that you're going to go to. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we we really do need to try to get as much bang for the buck we get out of that thing as well. So I'm not saying we put it intentionally in the line of fire. I'm no, saying you we you absolutely should. I'm saying we base our strategy around it, though, for nope, sure. Definitely put it right up front. <laughs> I'm not joking. I mean, that thing's meant to take a beating. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's actually it's got a shit ton of armor. It's, really, it's yeah. it's hard to sustain, and we don't have infinite replaceable parts for it. But every time it takes yeah, a but... hit, that's a hit that we don't take on our inner sphere mechs, where we mm -hmm. lose components. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. really, in the long run, it probably saves us money by that thing getting hit instead of one of our mechs getting hit. And I say we just use it until we can't use it anymore, and then we bench that's it until fair. we get more parts to use it some more. Mm -hmm. And if we can't, then we just can't, and then... But uh, something like either that Caesar or that Devastator standing next to it uh, is kind of a force multiplier, don't you think? Mm. It just Definitely. it just changes how we envisioned our our fight plan to go. Well, yeah. That's, I mean, the whole th we were hoping for jump jet capability, but didn't quite get it so well we were hoping for a mo mobile unit but we could transition to a slower moving harder hitting one pretty quickly. It, it relatively Certainly. wouldn't be what we it pretty much be the same we had before uh, minus one black knight here's the thing nobody for at least the next uh, mission or two nobody we fight is going to know that that warhammer's got a minimum range that's fair so if something wants to make the mistake of running up on it that's their mistake to make one time and that's the only time they'll get to make it so we have it's that advantage true. in the beginning. That thing hits harder than your standard, much harder than your standard war. We have the Wolverine and the Axeman that can keep anything off of its back with the mobility to protect the rear. So we can literally move more or less like a phalanx with close-in flankers that guard the rear side and uh, advance methodically on the enemy. I got work. It just depends on what it's so. Uh... Well, I think that I think well. So the question is how how big a loan do you want to take out? Do you want to go with the Caesar or do you want to go with the Devastator? How are we it's feeling? 100 ton mech. Yep. They Probably know it's manageable, I think. It's a 100 ton mech. It's, it's, I think we can manage the debt if we get one for the Devastator. And then bigger maybe, mech means bigger paying jobs. Maybe down the line, if we get availability or a line of information on a guillotine or a grasshopper or something like that, maybe we upgrade the the Wolverine to to a heavier, harder hitter to complement this style of combat more. Or do we want to swap out the Wolverine with the assault mech and then run with uh, the Warhammer, the Archer, the Devastator, and the Axeman? Oh, we still would need. Well, yeah, I mean, we can give the Wolverine over to the medium lance, strike lance. Mm -hmm. That can work, too. So it sounds like, sir, you got a hard-on for that Devastator. A little bit. <laughs> I also want those fighters, though, too. Well, I think, like Bandito said, I think $8 million down payment is very manageable. A, a one-year loan... Or one two year million. payment plan of loan. eight mil, so eight mil, eight mil now, then eight mil a year later. That's I think, again. I well, think it's the, very no, manageable. Two years, two years, not one year, two years. Is it two years? Oh, yeah, well, eight mil a year for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, yeah, that shit, that's manageable as hell. But I think that's, not only is that manageable, depending on how well the next contract or two goes, you even get it paid off early, possibly. Yeah. We could. And especially because, and the bigger mech means we can take bigger jobs and get more money. So. The only thing left to shop for then would be a vehicle to replace the, the, the troop carrier, if we even want to deal with that right now. I think we should all in one go. Thanks, should. Okay. Thanks so well. So Vehicles we're not going to are... tell her what we want yet, but let's ask her what she's got vehicle-wise. Do they Indeed. have vehicles here? I guess they... When you say that, the captain pleads for it. It's like, no. Someone no already bought out all the vehicles. It was me. I bought them all. No, oh, that's very... We that's... started a new vehicle company. Got a second dropship. So he does... He's just did oh, the whole... congratulations. Well yes. done. What are these guys? That, what, what's the name of them? Gravewalkers. Yeah. Gravewalkers. So they're they're like a big operation. They're I mean, super... they're no, they're a they're they were a company sized mech unit just like you. Uh, but when they hit the Jade Falcons, they literally took their dropship, landed it on top of a uh, like headquarters supply unit, and then just like fucking wiped the Falcons out overnight and looted a ton of shit, uh, and then made a killing on salvage. He's like, yes. We just decided to get a second Union class dropship. We'll be opening up a second company. I'm thinking we would just put all vehicles in it for now until we were, you know, could get some mechs in there. Well, kudos, sir. Good for you. Excellent. You uh, we couldn't have done it without you buying all, you know, under the <laughs> table. Everything. No big deal. Uh, yes. The water was quite delicious. By Excellent. The way. That water money is what allowed us to put the loan down on the second Union. Lovely. <clears throat> well, if you ever want to work together again, just let us know. Well, if Happy it's on a paying contract, of course, I have got no of course. course. Just to be clear, though, if we're contracted to work against you, I'll kill all of you. Oh, of course. We would Naturally. do the same. Well, It'll be a nice try. funeral. Better bring all those new vehicles. You know how hard it is to get a second dropship in this business? I feel oh, like we're a unit that's unit. really going to go somewhere. I think so. I'm I'm happy for you. Yeah, sorry. They had a I, bunch of bulldogs, but we bought all of them. Ah, uh, well, it is what it is. I suppose we'll right. just hit buy okay, what we came get. here to buy and uh, move it all. Yeah, and see what other sort of vehicles, places sell vehicles, I guess. If there is any other There's places. no other vehicles on this planet. Ah. I mean, just to be clear here, there's like several dozen mercenary companies that are showing up That's waiting fair. to move out. Uh, the number of mercenaries coming in is not equal to the amount of transportation material coming in. Gotcha. <clears throat> All right. Well, looks like the vehicle thing is shot then. So I think we have a deal though on the mechs, on the mech and the, uh, the two aerospace fighters. You could try and get the price down, but I think that's the package we want. I I think yeah. we don't want to try to do that. You're like, I think we should try to negotiate. If <laughs> he's like, let's not negotiate. <laughs> Let's not negotiate because we might screw ourselves over in the end. Uh, are you are you saying that you don't? Uh, well, how the negotiation role goes would it would it be just if we can get the price down? You could I also cause the do... price to go up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well that's then let's was... not rely on my ability that's, at rolling dice. That's why so. <laughs> I was like, why didn't you just take the twelve million? Why did you try to negotiate? <laughs> it ended up working out. It did. You got, he, a, you he got it down a million, head. didn't you? No, it was the same no, price. It was, it was the same price. He barely got break even. We both rolled really well. Yeah, really well. So we're out vehicle. So we're out one slot of vehicle. That's no problem. But we Fine. gained two fighters, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so you're agreeing make to make up for the vehicle. <laughs> you're agreeing to buy the Corsair, uh, the Lucifer. I'm sorry, uh, Corsair and Saber. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so let me write that down somewhere. And then Devastator. Uh, air support. And then the World Devastator. Uh, That's sorry. not a thing that you have. Just a Devastator. Yeah, World Devastator. World is not Devastator. A thing that Devastator is scary. Uh, you're going to need to go hire two pilots at some point. I think that's probably the next thing we should look for is probably the pilots and whatnot. Because we, yeah. do, we do need a mech pilot Mercnet. as well. Log into Mercnet. There's no Mercnet. That's not until Wolf Dragoons comes around. You can go to oh. Comstar and hire them from the Mercenary Review Board. Or you can go out on the streets. There's plenty of, you know, mm. mercs here. mercenaries. We do need a mech pilot, and then we do need to 
pilots for the fi- aerospace fire. I prefer so. to go to Comstar. That way, they're, we're at least hiring someone that we know is bonded. The real bonded are the friends the, you made the, along the, the way. The legal bondsmen. Union bonded. Devastator 2481. Jesus, this thing is a monster. It is a monster. Yes, I that's the two the two Goss reps and two PPCs, even if it's not ER. That's that's terrifying. <laughs> so that's a that's a lot of damage in a single volley. So Pondo, do you want the Devastator or do you want to keep the mech that you have? <laughs> I'll pilot the mech Devastator if you want to try out the all right, Wolverine. I'll take the archer. Then. I'll take the archer then. You want to do the archer? Okay. Yeah, we'll shove the Wolverine into the second lance. So who's piloting the Warhammer? Uh, English. I think it was piloting the Gold Stack. Okay. EVS two. So now we have. So I think essentially what we're going to do is have uh, the Axeman do interference work <laughs> and be a can opener essentially. Well, the axe man will be like, if they get in close to where half of our yeah. mechs are weaker, they we can have, just open We have them up. a crap ton of long range capability now. I don't, the chat is really wants us to get a second long tom, but I think those are like incredibly rare and, and incredibly super hard expensive. To get. Yes. Incredibly expensive. And plus, they sold all the, they, plus we don't there's have no any vehicles. vehicles yeah. <laughs> We just went through that. <laughs> no vehicles. It was just stated. None. The, the, the Zero. second long time will be great. I wouldn't deny them. It is just it's not the very best possibility. I think it was like a luck shoot that we got it the first time. Hell, if we're lucky, we could get Bowman. Actually, long toms out. cost something like two million sea bells. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that's not that bad. I mean, for as far as vehicles cost, that's like a hundred yeah, times high. more than a normal vehicle. That's fair. It's the cost of a light mech. I think uh, we're so used to cost And in combat, you can just... Yeah, I mean, just to be clear, in combat, if something walks up to this thing, it can just step on it and crush it instantly. That's yeah. fair. That's why it's... Because all it has to defend itself is way like in the back. Four machine guns. <laughs> it has to have, like, a shit ton of ammo carriages just to have enough ammunition to fire because it's just an enormous gun. Yeah, we could just get to me. It's a... Uh... So, so we have like three whole re- like reloads of it, right? Yes. So it can fire like thirty or forty rounds. I feel like we should get more ammo for that oh, crap. in the future. I'm thinking of something mm-hmm. else. Like keep like ten reloads of it if we can. Uh, since you're signing the deal with no um, qualms, uh, she just says, you know, a member of your unit called and was asking about you, uh, and was. Inquiring about vehicles as well, so I'm willing to throw in a free dirt bike uh, with a small <laughs> motor on it just for that guy. He seemed like a really nice guy all around. McCurk's like, sick, let me see this dirt bike. He gets more excited about that than he does the mech. He's like, oh, it's awesome. Uh, it's an urban camo dirt bike. Uh, it's got a small... Um, what do you call it? Do you guys do insignias? He immediately sits on it and he's like, yeah. Can we get like she a tosses you the keys. She's that like, thanks full. And drive off. Really. <laughs> <laughs> a wheelie right on out of there. All right. Well, I was going to suggest we get a rapier on it, but all right. <laughs> I'm going back to the dropship to hang out with a rapier and talk about this sweet new dirt bike. <laughs> I just leave you guys. I'm like, I'm out of here. Uh, so the. The dirt bike already has a mount for a sword and a rocket launcher mount. Oh, so he custom ordered it. I yeah, got he it. custom ordered it. <laughs> it's right. also got a cup holder. <laughs> I right in, if we right in the middle area. I wonder if we shouldn't trade in the archer for the Caesar. I don't know. Do you want to do that? dangerous game you're playing. What's the Caesar do? Oh, so let me look at it again. Chat says we should trade the Axeman, but I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That thing does I think have the Rad AC really 20. wants to use his axe, the thing. And that axe. Well, the thing well, about it, if we change... Great close-in mech. He's, he'll be the only close-in mech left. And the only... Ju- we'll, ha- we'll go from a lance where we were going to have only one without jump jets to having only one, one with, with jump, jump jets. jets. I don't know. I think, yeah, that might not be a bad thing, because... Caesar. I mean, they're equi- equivalent tonnage. Uh, 
Gauss rifle, ER, PPC, and four medium lasers. That's really good close range, yeah. And the mini pulse lasers will help you with your shooting. Problem is the Caesar costs like twice as much as the Archer, so we'd be tacking. Well, the Archer is not the seven same. Mil. The Archer is probably worth a lot more because it has all the height, the double heat sinks, XL engine. Oh, that was the upgraded variant. Yeah, it's like the four M, I think. It may not be a bad idea, but I don't know. What might not be a bad idea? Trading the Archer for the Caesar. I mean, I think that with in keeping with our new Warhammer and Devastator, the Caesar would be more in keeping with the style. Sure. I don't know. But then again, the Archer does have the indirect fire capability that fills a role that we don't have right now, that we wouldn't otherwise have. No, I think it would make more sense to trade out the Axeman. I just don't know if I'm interested in trading out the Axeman. How big is the Axeman? 70. The the AC-20 is nice, but the Gauss rifle does almost about as much and has much, much longer range. I don't have it written down. The Gauss Gauss rifle has, like, insane range. Yeah, so I think it may be... It'd be up to you, Rad. 15 damage? For what, the Gauss rifle? Yeah. It's 15 damage for insane long range. But the AC twenty does A twenty damage, but it's obviously close range. But and you also get an ER PPC, which is also a can opener as well. Mm-hmm. Not clan, but still a can opener. And you know, in case in the future we may be able to switch it out with the clan P- ER PPC later. Mm, but it looks dumb. <laughs> it does. <laughs> It does look dumb. I, I Just do. to be clear, <laughs> most of them, like, there's no Devastator model. Uh, there's no Caesar model. So we're not going to be able to get you mechs that look good on the battlefield. You just I mean, have I, to imagine I, them. I already don't have a, a model for my mech. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, just to be clear, they're not going to pay you full price for a used mech. That's uh, fair. Yeah, They're going to force you to make a negotiation roll on it as well. Mm, I don't know how I feel about the Caesar business. Uh, one thing you should note is that when a Gauss rifle is destroyed, it deals two points of damage to the pilot. That's also fair. And I have two of those. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you don't want them to explode or you'll you'll literally be dead. Yeah, you just want them to be uh, detached. Okay, so Archer it is. It... <laughs> I'm fine with the Archer. I'm trying to. F- I saw a mech before that had a freaking oh, um, oh, freaking bow can an artillery gun. It doesn't matter. We 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 know what we have available here. Yeah, no, so. I'm just looking for my own curiosity because I was, saw it and I thought that looked cool. So they'll, they'll keep it in mind for later. Yes, that's important. Yeah. Because you may be find somewhere that has vehicles. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're good with the the deal. The, the deal that we made with the Devastator and the the two aerospace fighters. Okay. Uh, Unless Rad wants to trade in his mech for... You've almost doubled the firepower rating. I him and haw over it, and I don't don't know that we want to sit here while I him and haw over it. Oh, shit, I forgot about the aerospace fighters. Well, that's going to... I don't actually know how much they cost yet. I'm going to have to find their sheets. Uh, I think it was, like I guess, like five, five, six... I mean, I don't want to guess. I want to look it up and get the real deal. So two Gauss rifles. So that's like four damage they both get shot out. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> well, don't get them both shot. I out. think that would actually kill Sid if he was piloting that. No. I'm, yes. You, you and almost... I have the same. You and I have the same bod. No, I, I, I've been gone. investing in bod. Oh, have you? Yeah. I I'm mean, two points now. of damage will kill you because that's four points of damage on your character sheet. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so a hit is one point. So it's. Yes. It is okay. two points. On your character sheet. You get twice your bod rating, and each hit is two bods. Or, sorry, it's two mm-hmm. points. Basically, yeah, would take one up. hit is one bod rating worth of damage. Gotcha. Yeah, Sid has died many times in this campaign. Uh, so have I. Uh, only through direct medical intervention is he still alive. At acts of God. Like, the most direct. Yep. 
Yeah, hey, probably fine. Well then. If anything, I'd roll up a new character. Well then, I'd roll up a like, face. Uh, we have a new devastator. We should probably go play with it. Phrasing. Uh <laughs> And it sounds like a great idea. That bandier gets in it, he's just laughing like a child the whole entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's the simulation, he's just like <laughs> Oh god, he's gonna be laughing like a maniac because he's one shotting Max. <laughs> uh sorry, I'm updating your your unit's cost. <laughs> You're actually going to have a little bit of a money problem next month. Uh, I think we expected that. Yeah. That's where that's our comfort zone. That's where we like to be. On that raggedy edge. <laughs> we need we need that grounding us. We need the fear. <laughs> we need the dread. It's like fighting clans. It was just constant dread. We're great. We don't have it. We get like laxy daisy with everything, and then everything ends up badly. Mm -hmm. Or for this favor. And the Corsair has 1190. Actually, that Corsair is rated very highly. Oh, sorry, the 14 is 1330. Devastator is rated very highly. Uh, I mean, the Corsair's rated is almost as deadly as an Axeman. <clears throat> but that's assuming it drops a shit ton of bombs before it arrives. Cool, now I have, the, like, the lowest battle value by far. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that Wolverine almost has as much battle value as you, you know? Yeah. The regular Wolverine's Warhammer good, also. Look, as much as that is a joke, like, AC-20 plus Axe to the face. Uh, that's That's scary. That's actually. scary. Yeah. That's 40 points of damage in one go. That's more than that's yeah, frightening. That's about 40, yeah. Look, you guys keep buying increasingly large mechs. Oh, yeah, I forgot to update the... Uh, so you also have an outstanding thing. I know we talked about this. I forgot to mention it on stream. Uh, whether or not you want to spend 1.1 million C-bills to trade in your Wolfhound for oh. Wolf 2. Oh, yes. And yes. we had to check in and see if Haller was okay with that. Yeah, we had to do with Haller. Uh, yeah, because it's Haller's personal mech despite yes. your desperate, desperate attempts to take it from him over and over again. Once. Constantly. <laughs> Once. Once. Persecuted. I mean, he's lucky we didn't just shoot him and take it. We saved his life with, and, and all of the rest of the crew's life with that mech. Yeah. Uh... Does he want the upgrade? I mean, he wants the upgrade, but he all doesn't right. want to pay $1.1 million for it. No, we draft some kind of plan that will, I don't know, something. Maybe we should just offer a payment plan to buy his mech from him. Um, he's not big on he... that. Yeah, yeah he's definitely 100% against that. Let's have that conversation, right? Because uh, this doesn't take place at the mech area. This is the Federated well, so Commonwealth we, is we going to swap the, the mech. Con we will front the cost for the mech upgrade, and we will dock his pay until it's paid off. I mean, you would be docking his pay forever. For the rest of his life. Yes. Uh, um, look, we're, so, we're, what if we're willing yeah. to invest in him? So now we he, own you. <laughs> but he needs to pay back like uh, a percentage of it or something like that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. he co he's just like, listen, guys, I think I'm a pretty good mech pilot and I'm working on being a better leader. But I, with the mech like this, I can bring in the salvage. I can do good for the unit. Invest in me, I'll pay back some of it, and then... I'll pay back the rest through victory. Actually, I have an I, I have a I have an idea that I think everyone will be able to accept if you'd be willing to hear me out. You have come a long ways. At first, I thought you were dirty, filthy pirates, not worth my time, and I probably should kill you. But he's just nodding when you that. say that. He's like, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. You managed to change that opinion. You managed to become a respected member of this company. We will foot the bill for the upgrade if you sign. A, t a contract with terms of service with the units. How long? Five years. Uh, where do I sign? 
Right but here, actually. He needs the contract. But he also needs to pay back a percentage, right? Like you'll pay back a yeah. percentage, and yeah. we will also we'll have we'll, we'll create a bottom line, whatever that number is. We can negotiate at a later date. But this is the preliminary plan. We'll create a bottom line that you have to pay back over the term over the, the course of your contract. If you fail to pay it back by the end of the contract, you'll be obligated to recontract with the unit until you've paid back the bottom line. We will also add any salvage, a percentage of the salvage that you recover during operations to your bottom line. So it's like a performance bonus. The more the better you perform yeah, on mission. I agree with that. The more we add to your bottom line. No problem signing it. Okay. Okay. I'll hold out the contract. <laughs> Uh, you have the following battle value ratings. Uh, your whole unit, I think, used to have like an 8,000 rating. Uh, your, your first lance now has that same rating, 8,125. Yeah, I was going to say. Cause, yeah. uh, medium lance, which is now... Okay, so first lance is Warhammer 2C, uh, Archer 4M, Devastator, um, uh, DVS 2, and Axeman 1N. Uh, lance 2 is 4,420 with a Wolf 2... Wolverine 6M with no pilot, Panther 9R, Warhammer 6R. Uh, light support lance is a 976 rating with Long Tom, Pack Rat Flamer, and Swiftwind. And your air support company is, uh, sorry, Air Lance is 1904 with a CSR V14 prototype Corsair and an S20, SB27 Saber. So uh, now we just need to find the your entire need, uh, company has a pilot? fifteen thousand four twenty five uh, battle value rating, which it's means fantastic. you're now rated four twenty five. <clears throat> you're now rated at being a heavy company. We are. Yes. Yeah. I'd hope so. Uh, so we need to find two pilots and a new mechware. Yes. See. Sí. See, sí, senor. Well, gentlemen, I believe the interviews are your job. I'm going to my quarters. Ugh. Good night. Don't we need to find someone else to maybe try to fill in Rapier's job that can do a job better than Rapier? What? If No one can do a job better than Rapier. I know he, we talked about it. He's a handyman. We, we talked about an, a, a field operative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, that's what to we're going to do. Rapier. To do campaign, to do campaign level intel while Rapier yeah. does battle, battlefield yeah. recon. Yes. Right. Yes. You can attempt to find that, but that's a hard, hard sell. Finding a person with that level of skill. Maybe, yeah. Maybe we not don't find that job. out. Maybe we don't find that right now, but we put it, we put it up on like LinkedIn or whatever, right? Like put it on Craigslist. I mean, you put it on Comstar, the heavy, mercenary Comstar. review board. Heavy rated mercenary, mercenary company seeking. Uh, Experienced, experienced field operative for uh, intel-based operations and missions. So we're looking for a Daniel Craig look-alike that has the same skills Correct. of that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you guys might actually qualify for... No, you're still a striker company, but your first lance is no longer a battle lance. It's an assault lance. I'd, I'd say A so. lance that has three assault mechs in it is an assault lance. It's two, it's two assaults and two heavies. Uh, two assaults, that's two still an assault ones. lance. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So pilots first, and then maybe field operative later. Got it. Right. Maybe after uh, this mission, we'll worry about the field operative. Who's who's doing what? Who's looking for what? Let me see if I maybe... I think we're just going to look on Comstar for the pilots, right? Yep. What are you looking for out of your pilots? Experience, uh, loyalty, and able to follow orders well. Great, even. So, like, a basic mech warrior, then? Basic mech warrior. Yeah, no problem. If you're just looking for a basic mech warrior, there's dozens of applicants. If there's, like, a better, possibly? Do, do they, like... A veteran. Apply a veteran with like a base warrior. pay? Yeah, like a veteran. Uh, just to be clear, a veteran neck warrior would be paid more than all of you and probably more skilled than all of you. Uh, and it's not that hard, right? Because you have plenty of money, technically. Possibly. How about moderate? What are the levels? 
What are the levels? Uh, you're all rated as either being green or regular. Veteran is someone who has your level of skill, but is also good at mech tactics and mech repair. And elite would mean someone who's a 1-1 or a 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, so would veteran be like 3-4 or... I mean, veteran three, would be like 3-3, three, 3-4 three, three, or 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. So as far as like shooting... Regular is a 4-5. I'm fine with a regular. Yeah, I'd say just regular. Yeah. I think that's what most of their lance is now, isn't it? Yeah. There's a bunch of four, four, four fives. Unless Howler got much better and it's now like a three, four, but I doubt it. Okay. Uh, you pick up a pilot who wants to be hired by the name of Remy Lemur. Uh, he doesn't have a call sign. He was a former Free Worlds League sergeant during several Enduring campaigns. Uh... And eventually got, you know, mech tested, mech approved. Remy Lemur? Remy Lemur. All right. All right. His call sign is Lemur. Uh, okay. His call <laughs> sign. Did he have a call sign? I mean, they need a dog. Minute, no, 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 he didn't have a call sign previously because he's. Oh, okay. We're theming all their call signs on that Lance, right? Yes. For dog oh, names. Right. Um, we'll let. Uh... We'll let the Russians choose. Well, I'll, let, I'll, let we'll chat, let pick. I'll let chat pick this one. Has to be dog theme. Has to be dog a, name. We need a dog pack name, guys. Bulldog? No. Like French Bulldog? No. Aww. Bulldog is too mean sounding. I mean, if he's a uh, hug, if he's Cajun, he obviously needs meet? to be Tramp. Where's Lady this guy from? Lady and the Tramp. He's from the Free Worlds League. The entering so, duchy. So, like, where oh, me and McGurk is from. Uh, yeah, he's from the Austrian side of things, though. What's an Austrian dog? He's from the Eastern European. Nice with their names. Eastern European side of things. Hound sounds good. I like I like Lab, but Hound also. Was, oh, Mastiff. Man, Mastiff, Mastiff sounds real good. I think Mastiff sounds great. Yeah. Dog, dog or wolf. Good boy. <laughs> I'm taking we're not, Mastiff. Yeah, we're not Mastiff looking. We're not looking to shit on this guy and give him a crappy one. I mean, he's like the other. He team. hasn't earned that yet. You're not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's not like the other two. He's a freshie. He hasn't had the bad taste in your mouth like the other two. Oh right, no, the other ones got the shitty names because they were being. Punks. So we're being yes. shitty. They're being shitty, yeah. Yeah, they'll get, cool, they'll get cool ones eventually. We'll see how they do this operation based off how their training was going. It looks like they're already got the right idea. They're not going to be happy fighting no oh, Draconis, though. I don't they're think they're mercenaries, huh? They're mercenaries. Uh, they're mercenaries. Uh, they're, they, they've already stated they're like pretty low on the food chain now. How, as far Howler, as need, Howler knows where we're going, he needs to be beating that into them right now already. So, uh, you hire two pilots, Mara Campbell and Joycea Jackson, uh, which continues the, the theme of only having female members of the dropship crew, apparently. This is very strange. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what the random table <laughs> generator comes up with, so. And they all hate Bandito. Uh, I mean, look. That's fine. Do they have that's a... fine. They don't have call signs, signs yet. How about um, wait, are aerospace dead? pilots are both yes. female? Yep. Okay, and your pilot so our and your commanding officer wing pilot. is obviously going to be the Valkyries. No, I mean, so, you can't do that when you literally have someone with a call sign Valkyries. She has a call sign Valkyries. Yes. Oh. Well, yeah. still, we need we need, uh, we need need uh, female Norse names then. Yeah, well, they need to be, uh, what is it, Hugen and... Munin. Munin, yeah, Odin's Ravens. All right, I'll take that. There we go. Immediately, I'll do that. Good job. I was going to suggest Mock um, and Bed of Blue Jay, but... Oh well. Yeah, but Close Odin's Ravens. Yeah, that goes along with crow that goes along with yeah. crows. And that's well. that's our Lance name, Odin's Ravens. Or you could just call them Odin's. Or the Ravens. Or the Ravens. Or, or Odin's. Odin's the Ravens. What is our Lance name? <laughs> uh, no, we haven't figured that out yet. That's we right. don't have cool Lance names yet. Our Lance name is Crows. We're like the nerds. Murder. Ours is, <laughs> yeah, ours is murder Thunderclap. Lance. Thunderclap. <laughs> I'm still I'm still gonna be murder actual. 
Murder six. Are you changing your? You sold you sold me on that. Are you changing your <laughs> call sign to murder actual? Yeah. Okay. I'll have to redo the overlays. No, again. you gotta make it murder six. But people will still murder radio. Six. Six. People still radio you murder actual. I, I mean, murder six sounds like you accidentally tripped into somebody <laughs> to murder them. <laughs> you know, it's like manslaughter three, murder six. Murder six. Murderito? I mean, that does sound pretty reasonable. <laughs> Gold murder? No, no. Gold sack's never changing this freaking cool sign. Dude, no, season bad. three. Murderito sounds like a bad burrito. No, uh, so, I mean, you're leaving or Blake really Howe, your paralegal yeah. law officer, without a job, <laughs> without a vehicle. So, I guess he'll just putz around on the dropship for a while. I mean, yeah, we can't, we couldn't get a vehicle unless yep. there's like someone on Craigslist is selling a vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I still don't. There's like no him. Craigslist in the future. That's not a thing. I still don't like him, though. Or no, Craigslist. No one like, sells restricted that. military technology on the internet. Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, yeah. So, do you? Let's go over the next job details before we run out of time tonight. We got a lot done, but we do need to do that because next week I want to jump right into the thing. Combat. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, where to put my notes? Do, 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 do. Uh, it's probably under your financial section. Yeah, so you guys have a slight problem. And that problem is uh, that your maintenance cost for your unit... Is skyrocketed? Yeah, it skyrocketed a lot. It's actually way higher than that. Um, what about a second engineer? Is this a planet where we could get the Baron some help? Yeah, but your tech, yeah. your tech crew's been really good so far. Okay. If you say we don't need it. Yeah, you don't need it. Okay. Uh, your unit's got a lot of aspects. I think it's just the, so. the base, like, maintenance for Max is the, re the reason. No, I understood what he meant. Yeah. That's just reminding me of something yeah. else. Meow, meow, meow. I imagine the Warhammer is what is uh, the major, major thing. Point. This one costs us a lot to maintain. I would imagine it would be the Devastator. Well, the clan, well, it's the, the reason I think the Warhammer is because it's clan and not, we don't the we Baron can do it, but... That's what I'm saying. We can't pay to fix anything on the clan, so it's yeah. technically costing us nothing until we fix it. Uh, the Axeman right. actually costs more to maintain than the Warhammer. Yeah. Really? Uh, yes. The Devastator costs twice as much as the next highest. Jesus Christ. <laughs> There's a hundred. That's what I would have guessed. Yeah. Devastator costs more to maintain than the Warhammer, which still outguns it by quite a bit. You know, alternatively, I could Warhammer? give the I could give the axe man to the other lance and pilot the other warhammer. We'd have two warhammers and the devastator. They would really you know call your call because... your warhammers Mario and Luigi. <laughs> 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 well, like the they're the basically, the basically the same, like but one of them's taller, right? slightly taller. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all I was thinking. It's like it's going to be really obvious. And one of them's way something. better at Smash Bros than the other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, your, your new unit maintenance cost is 7.24 mil a month, uh, which is an enormous bloat. It used to be... Um, it used to be probably like, like two, like five. Five. Uh, your salary to pay for all your employees is 0.2 mil a month. Your ship maintenance cost is 2 million a month. Your monthly loans for the ship are 1.6, and to pay for all of the mechs that you just bought in the aerospace fighters is uh, 0.66 mil a month, which means that your monthly expenses are pretty dang high. Uh, do, 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 do. We're just going to do a so, lot of high-paying missions. What you're saying is, we got to win. I mean, you might not even be able to make it through the next month <laughs> uh, without taking this contract and hoping that they pay for your salaries. Uh, so your monthly expenses are 11.66 million, and you have... Jesus Christ. Oh, uh... Minus one, one, zero, 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 zero. Uh, nine million eight hundred and seventy-seven thousand C-bills. So yeah, you definitely can't make payroll next month. That's not right. 
Right. Uh, you have yeah, how much four you weeks. Can we, like, some of us forego the payroll so that way everybody else gets paid? I mean, it's uh, your salaries cost 0. 0.2 million. You could all not be it's paid not, and it yeah. wouldn't make a dent. It wouldn't make yeah. any difference. Yes. That's fair. We're, we're not going to be able to buy beans and bullets uh, <laughs> without That's some fair. more money. <laughs> uh so based on the contract that was negotiated via dice rolls uh 60 percent of your uh monthly expenses will be paid by the client which is going to take a lot of heat off of you they're also going to do your transportation mm. for you but essentially you need to arrive in less than two months or you'll be out of money before you even show up that so we is... head straight there uh yes i'll need to calculate how many jumps it is but kukin's pleasure point and rubigan are not close uh, they're probably at least five to six jumps. Which that's probably like... So, you meet in a shady downtown bar that's built into a very upscale hotel. Sounds about right. Uh, the whole place is cleared out, and there's security guards wearing giant black suits and black sunglasses uh, keeping sure... people out of the bar. I show up on Rapier's old dirt bike. <laughs> <laughs> the valet takes, takes the I toss keys. Him, I toss him the keys. Very good, sir. We'll take care of that for you. Park this next to a Porsche. <laughs> they daintily drive the the dirt bike out. It's like all regal. He goes he goes Ferris Bueller on that thing. <laughs> you see him taking it off some sick jumps. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> the is guy it... you're going to talk to uh, is wearing one of those Russian military aviator hats with the big flappy ear things nice. and he's got a Kung's arm which is the Free Rasselhag Republic's military armband on but is wearing a tailored suit uh, he's got a huge curly white beard uh, and salt and pepper hair with a nice big bald spot uh, he's drinking Everclear at the bar and says, Yes, come sit down. Sit down. I am the man you have come to see. I have cleared this facility out so that we may speak. Feel free to be open with me here, yes? Absolutely. Yes. Now, as you know, we are not being bonded with Comstar. Everything that we discuss here is under the table. Of course, of course. Yep. So he starts loosening his tie up. So professionalism is not as needed here. Please be at ease and at home. There are no recording devices here. Butch McGurk never looked like he wasn't at ease or at home. <laughs> he looks like he was born on a bar stool of a shitty bar. Like it's just where he's always existed. Uh, he's gonna pour you out some strawberry dockery, and it's just like, please, take, drink. Is it non-alcoholic? No, it's oh. as alcoholic as it could be. Uh... When you ask him if it's non-alcoholic, he pours some Everclear in it, <laughs> and he's like, if it wasn't, it, it, it now is it... no longer. Alright, I drink it. I'm not too worried about it. Um, this is a business thing, so he'll drink, drink it for the business. Thing. I represent the Jarl of Altenmark. Our free Rasselhag Republic is suffering from what you might call a crisis of confidence. I'm sure you know about the clan invasion. It is why I wish to hire you on the spot and as quickly as possible. Your unit has some experience fighting them not once but twice now. Uh, famously, Easy. you tried to warn people about them and everyone considered you crazy. Uh, Comstar tried to put a ban on you. That is why I feel very safe in contacting you and uh, not trusting Comstar with this. We wish for you to travel to the world of Rubigan. It is just across the border from Altenmark, two jumps. There is a facility there that produces battle mech parts. As you might know, the Free Rasselhag Republic was once part of the Draconis Combine, but after years of fighting, we managed to get our independence. So, unsurprisingly, almost all of our mechs and mech technology are based on Draconis Combine styles. However, while the Draconis Combine has begun to improve their mech technology with double heat sinks, ferrofibrous, endosteel, 
ghost rifles, a extended range technology. The Free Rustlike Republic remains thoroughly stuck on 3039 era technology. This facility on Rubigan is producing something called the refit kits. I believe you are aware of these, yes? Yes. With indeed. this technology, we would be able to take Kung's army units on Altenmark and upgrade them to the newest standards of technology, helping to ease the burden of gap between us and the clans. And suffice it to say, the Jarl of Altenmark has a long-standing grudge against the Draconis Combine personally fought against them several times so you go to planet rubigan you land on the planet you take out the rubitech orbital factory in mu city you loot the place i feel that with three days my agents tell me you will be able to fully load on all of the technology and refit kits that we require onto a dropship now this is what you should know Rubicon is a world littered with asteroids in the orbit and is used as a major training ground for the Draconis Combined Mustard Soldiery Admiralty. 15% of their officer corps comes from Rubicon. That means that there are many entrances and exits from this planet. Our dropship that the Jarl is providing us will bring my dropship and your dropship into the planet. We will be disguised as a caravan of civilian merchants. We will drop down into Mia City. I will pay off bribes. Several agents will begin terrorist actions around the planet in order to distract the enemy forces. The fourth Alshain regulars on planet are not particularly loyal, and they are easily bribed, and they are prone to not following orders. They have in the past easily been baited into one-on-one -on -one fights, um, samurai style. You know of what I'm talking about, yes? Yes. Hmm. I'm sorry. It is different in my language. I, I speak Swedenese, uh, so I'm hoping that everything I'm saying is clear to you. S Swedenese? Yes. Swedish? N no, Swedenese. It is the combination of Swedish and Japanese that we speak in the Free Rasleheka Republic. That makes sense. All right. Carry on. Uh, we used to be Swedish, then the Japanese came, now we are Swedenese. That's how it happens. Melt in the culture, yeah. We expect that no more than two companies of battle mechs will be free to come after you. Uh, the enemy has a total of six companies of battle mechs across two battalions and a battalion of vehicles. However, with the bribes and with the terrorist actions, we will be spreading the enemy out across the planet for as long as possible. We're hoping to hide the presence of our dropships. Uh, it would be inadvisable for your aerospace fighters, should you have any, to enter into this engagement in anything more than a dropship defensive standard. Uh, the enemy aerospace units are quite good here. As I mentioned, the DCMS Admiralty trains here regularly. Uh, there is a chance that there might be an enemy warship in the area. That would be very, very bad. Good. That would be terrible. However, this is the final piece of information you need to know. If you manage to defend the facility for, we are assuming, three days, we take off, we head into the asteroid belt in less than 24 hours, a jump ship that is already in waiting will come out of low power mode, and we will make a pirate jump out of the system to the halfway point between there and Altenmark. From there, you will find civilian transport to whatever destination you need, and you will be paid. We will continue on towards Altenmark, where we will be using the refit kits for the Jarl. Do you have any up. questions about anything I have just said? Uh, add a character. Kep company is... That's four lances, right? Uh, three lances. Three. It's three lances. Sometimes four to five. But that's so, super rare. So, so two companies, so it would be potentially six lances, six plus. Uh, yeah, you could be looking at 24 max total. So there's only one point of interest here. That's the manufacturing facility. Indeed. You're not looking at fancy campaign maneuvers here or distractionary tactics. All we need is the money. And your dropship is the collection point. Indeed. For materials. 
We'll, as I've stated, we will not be able to openly land our dropships and declare ourselves. We will be keeping the dropships at the civilian uh, base, spaceport in Miu City. And well, your unit will be making regular transports of materials. As soon as we march battle mechs out of our civilian merchant dropship, that's, the, the game is up. So you would believe. However, let me... It does not translate well into English. Uh, the blinders will be on. The, From the bribing, I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the Free Russell Republic's intelligence services uh, control the spaceport. So if we deploy, say, uh, long-range artillery and aerospace fighters in a defensive position only, does that We believe that bells? we will be able to mask their presence there for some time, okay. assuming that no one comes asking questions. Gotcha. But if, if those assets start to engage targets, then we're in trouble. Is there multiple facilities? Is that why we need to stay there for at least three days? No. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, these refit kits, they are not easy to disassemble, load, and then reassemble. Oh, so they have to be dis... Okay, so they're not... Well, like, and you, we are gathering them directly from the production plant. Uh, will you be deploying any recovery assets? We will be deploying prime mover units. You have seen these, yes? You use them to forklift up mechs. Yes. They also mm -hmm. secondary act as um, cargo trains. So our mission profile, our company's mission profile, is strictly to secure and defend the facility while you empty it. Empty. Is that accurate? That is accurate. All right. Those are those are the only questions I have. For the service, how far away is there? Uh, they have aer the planetary defenses. I'm I'm assuming they have multiple launch points for their aerospace fighters. How far away is the nearest one from our operations zone? Less than a day, easily. We are hoping that. Um, I do not wish to go into details, but we are hoping to. Eliminate the threat of enemy aerospace pilots. As part of your asymmetrical campaign. Yes, indeed. Uh, poisoning, food poisoning, death, garroting, uh, whatever we need in order to make sure that we are not harassed, we will do. Your thoughts mirror my own on that. Do you require any security uh, in transit from... The, from the manufacturing facility back to the dropship? Yes. Your unit job, will too. be responsible for that. Okay. So, escort. You think we'll have problems going in, or is only getting out, I'm guessing? Landing should not be an issue. But as Assuming that our course. intelligence facilities are working correctly, this mission should be easy PC. So, land, secure, defend, and escort and uh, egress us i would think our second company would be What's... good for the escorters while we defend you we... have a second company no we don't have a second company uh, second, second lance uh, what is... Is... i believe, no, it, would was, I I believe it would be more appropriate i would believe it would be more appropriate for our second lance to maintain the facility while we ran defense for the transportation though that is the weak point there Honestly, as the client, I must tell you, I would feel safer if your entire unit was guarding the transports. Vehicles and all. Yes. As I mentioned, they will be throwing um, a is whole a... company at you at any well, given time. Is it a single trip? Uh, no, it will be many trips over three days. Gotcha. That's fine. Well, you... one's a long, one is an artillery piece. So that really can't be with us. That is fine. You can leave it with the dropship, of course. I think we'd rather, we'd like to have our vehicles with the long tom, just in case. We can bring our second lance. That's no problem. Very well. We can discuss more as time goes on, but I think uh, we we can assure you now that we'll allocate our resources in in the way in ways best to defend you and your operation. Understood. What Here is, is the contract the... that I have uh, outlined. So let us see if you are in agreement. We will be paying you, upon completion of this mission, 59.46 million sea bills. <laughs> Spandio just goes wide-eyed. 
Does that include? Uh, Does that include repairs? Salvage, I will. I will repairs. go over the rest with you. Okay. I will be acting as your personal liaison to the Kung's army. We will not be providing any overhead compensation for you. Uh, and salvage rating is 10% of whatever you pull off the battlefield. So I apologize. Right. Normally I would push for more, but the Jarl himself points out that on a mission to acquire military technology, there is no budget. point to giving you more military technology when we can take it home. That is understandable. We will pay 60% of your monthly expenses and 40% of your repair costs, and we will cover all transportation. That sounds good. Very well, then. You are in agreement. I would stipulate that uh, the, tra the expenses during transit should be paid up front. Of course. As I said, we would pay 60% of your operating expenses. Very good. Okay. I, think, I believe we are in agreement, then. Very well. To the death of our enemies. I raise yeah. my glass. And, uh, and sip it gingerly. He drinks it and <laughs> then like drops the shot glass. Okay, I, I guess I toss yeah, my whole I, drink. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I just... <laughs> it's just a full daiquiri just yeah, yeah. over the shoulder. So take a tiny little sip and I'm like, Mah. <laughs> Escorting the best missions on games. Uh, one final question that we needed to cover. Let's see, you guys had a load of technology that was delivered. The swap technology from the Fedcom. Uh, whether you guys wanted to keep the inner sphere versions of it or sell them. I feel like I think we want to keep the double heat sinks. Uh, I mean, you can either batch sell everything for one point one million, or you can't sell anything. Right? They uh, only well, like guess... they. Basically, they're like we either transfer you all this technology, or we don't sell, we don't transfer anything. I think or we, we send you a check. Just, I yeah. think we just take the check. I think we just take the money. Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. and you have one point one million more. Because I don't think we have much to do with the medium pulse mm -hmm. savers and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I mean, we do. Uh. Well, they're not clan. That's the thing. They're in the sphere versions. What yes. Are you talking about? Oh, right. Exactly. Their inner sphere version, not clan. If it was clan, yes, we would keep that for our Warhammer. But new clan vector, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like you're gonna have to be um, con um, get a we're new turning into a Steiner bitch. Scout Lance, obviously. Uh, next week I will not be running the game. We are going to have a surprise guest that will be acting as our antagonists here to antagonize. Don't don't tell him that we bought all of these mechs. You will just be the whole, uh, Don't watch this guy. AP. I almost said his name. I know, I know. You got the okay. first letter out as well. I was like, Gah. yeah. Uh, we're gonna try something new where we have somebody else come on to play the bad guys. Uh, I will be assisting, but they will be the primary force leader. Uh. They've done a few playtests with us, but I wanted to start spreading out my mech tactics and uh, give Rad a chance to listen to me strategizing with somebody else. So Why this somebody else. Yeah, I am not going to be playing all the NPCs. Uh, I you will should be play the second Vader. Lance, Arthur, all by yourself. Yeah, I, I already do that. <laughs> I mean, against someone else, not yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting, actually. Uh, so. I think that's it for tonight. It's not Jordan Wiseman, sorry. Yep, Jordan Wiseman. It's not Jordan Wiseman. Stop saying yeah. that. It's my it's wife. Not. It's also not your wife. Stop saying I mean, that. I'll, I'll, I could email him. But... Look, Don't. let's concentrate on outros, okay? We somehow managed to actually get slightly less than four hours of RP in without a single mech combat. Yeah. Uh, it's a and, miracle. And, yeah, I mean, we managed to maintain a pretty good viewership as well. I was concerned. Yeah, people like I thought people well. wouldn't show up without the mech combat because there are people that are on YouTube that are like, fuck this, there's no mech combat this episode. <laughs> Which is why I said at the beginning there would be no mech combat. Yeah, you'll probably get loads of views, but no loads, of, not loads of time on the on videos. Oh, boy. Man. 
Saber and Corsair. All right. Uh, geez, did Sid lose him back? I mean, not yet, but who knows? Uh, but if anyone had the capacity to actually lose their mech in a session where there was no mech combat, that would be me. That's true. That's like, you didn't even have a mech to lose at the time. That's, that's, the thing. that's like the after credit scene, right? As you walk up to like look at your your where the archer is and it's just <laughs> not in its bay, and you're like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gone. Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> oh yeah, sir, we see we you, see my girl like a while ago. We, we, we cut to McGurk. He's, he's painted an empty mech bay on one of those giant <laughs> ribbons and put it in front of the archer so it looks like there's something there. His, his, eyes, are quite his eyes are so shitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his eyes are so shitty. I feel, oh, man. Man. I feel like really? the grapes are like very solid too. So it'd be almost How did they not notice someone stealing a. <laughs> Just around the corner, it's like a Heavy 7 and, and Pavel are like... <laughs> <laughs> it was well worth it after taking 12 hours to spray paint that dog. <laughs> Their hands are all covered in paint. Paint all over them. Yeah. High five. You, you pet your mech affectionately. Wait, did Harry and it causes it to tip over point? and cores itself? Oh. That does sound like a Sid Alpha strike right there. Did we ever figure out if... So it got his eye transplant? Yes. Yeah, they will pay for it if you want to get cyber eyes. I'll get cyber what? eyes. So that way you don't have to worry about your shit. Uh, <laughs> Can just... they be like blatantly cyber eyes like yes. future, jo it just like needs future to be Jordy the... without the visor? It just needs to be the one because you just got messed up in the one eye so you could look like Cable from Deadpool 2. Nice. I haven't seen Deadpool 2 yet. No. I, well, you... mm. I mean, if you know what Cable is, he has one messed up side and the one right uh, Most people would say you should, you're crazy and you should run on and say it. I, I'd say you could safely wait for it to come out on digital release. I will, I say, I will say this about Deadpool 2. It's, I will say it's not as good as the first one, but it is no. good. It's all right. Because this first one kind of sh shocks you about how Deadpool is and you, pair it back, uh, you, I think, should, you see two. I think the pair of comparison between the two is what AP said. Is that the first one was like the great, great one. The second one was to pay back Ryan Rose for investing so much money into it. Yeah. If, if you liked if you liked Deadpool 1 so much that you wish it had been a four hour movie then just watch two I guess because it's just it's just more. <laughs> it's just more. <laughs> it's just more. Uh, let's do some outros. Brad let's start with you. Hi, I'm Radosaurus. We did not get to do the promotion scene, even though I wrote promotions and awards for our fake NPCs. But it's fine. We'll do it next time. It's fine. We'll do it at the beginning of next episode We're so that our guests will know. be we'll confused. Do We're doing it live. Yes. Um, no, it's cool. Except it'll be I... really quick, so you're like just throwing people medals at people and hitting them in the head. Trying to go. Yeah. <laughs> I had a yeah, we'll do it like uh everybody be lined up ready to like load into their mechs, like right as we're landing right and getting ready to operate. And that's like the last thing you do to pump everybody up. You guys, you remember last time we fucked those guys up? Here's awards or you're promoted for a fucking slap on your check your under bottle. your mech seat because yeah. you've got lieutenant's bars. <laughs> you get an award and you get an award. <laughs> and not you, you suck. You suck. <laughs> your sister died, you lose. Oh, uh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Redosaurus. Yeah. I had a lot of fun tonight. It was fun. Uh, you know, McGurk's not as wild and crazy as he used to be, but I it, it was fun to splash in a couple of little McGurkisms uh, this evening. And he and he drank alcohol, so maybe it's the beginning of the end for him. Maybe this maybe he's off the wagon, and now he'll backslide uh, into being a drunken mess all over the drunken mess that everybody apparently loves. Uh, but no, I liked it. I'm uh, I was definitely thrown off by the 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 shopping spree right like i didn't it's it's just an interesting part of this game that welcome you, welcome to the critical role effect yeah it's an interesting part of this game that you don't get what you want like you know the the, the perfect scenario that you envision and want to happen is not what is available yeah so uh i think that's it's a cool little uh realism piece right that forces you to kind of like adapt and change uh your your tactics like i did not so, expect that we would walk away from the episode today with like triple the battle value that we did uh, beforehand. I thought that we did that kind of happened in between the two seasons, but I didn't expect it to happen just right like now. Suddenly after an episode. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. 
I think everybody's going to really enjoy their new uh, mechs, and I think it's going to take probably a combat or two for me to realize that the Axeman is super outclassed and that I need to look to replace him with something else. Because uh, I think... My prediction is he's not going to fit well into this uh, this new Lance, but we'll see. We'll see. Look, I mean, um, it's... here's no, the... I think he will. I think what I... you got to do with that Axeman is jump behind enemy mechs. Yeah, That's... I mean, of course. Uh, Essentially, you're going to be doing the job I was going to be doing, was be the one to jump behind. But uh, we'll see. I mean, there's no doubt that he has the knockout power that he's always had. But, um, you know, we'll just we'll see. You filled the close we'll range void that we all missing, essentially, except for the War- Warhammer. But that's clan stuff. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty that's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, like I said, I had a lot of fun. I draw stuff on the Internet occasionally. You can find me on Arthur's Discord. Although lately, Arthur's Discord has been very sassy towards me, so I've, I've shied away. Has it been um, sassy? No, fuck that shit. I want to know more. <laughs> I want to know more about this young woman in her battle armor suit too, and her giant this ass is, uh, This it's, it's happened. No, maybe. I don't know. It's um, Here's the thing, right? This may be a personality flaw of mine, uh, but in my, my personal, I don't like being questioned. Yeah, but I don't look, like it when people Rat, question I want me. you to listen to me, motherfucker. You used to draw mechs, and then you draw the inside of the mech and the explanation of how the chair lifts know, up into I know, the T-Rex. I, I no. want to know what's going on with this lady, okay? Really, Tell me a story. No, I'm not EQ not... Mag. I don't want to know her full life history from the time she was born to, like, how her problems with her mother. Like, I just want to know, man. Um, Tell me. The, I, I don't mean, even know her cool. name. That's cool. I'm not. I'm not really referring to that. I'm referring okay. more to, to like general chat when I like chime in with my opinion and people are like your opinion's dumb, uh, which is fine. It's an opinion. You're allowed to think other opinions. Are don't dumb. be I mad because the teenagers are wolf packing you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just that. So, like I said, I don't like being questioned. Both in my professional life, my military life, and my personal life, uh, I I enjoy a certain level of respectability. That uh, generally, when I say things, people don't question it. Uh, but on the internet, I don't enjoy that. So I'll be like, "This is my. This is what I think is going to happen," and people will be like, "That's dumb." And I'll be like, well, "How? How fucking dare you, stranger on the internet? Uh, I mean, not just take what I to say." Welcome to my every fucking day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I've, I've, I've. When that happens, I'm just like, "All right, I'm done. I'm out." <laughs> uh, we'll still. You just wait and see. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm on Arthur's Discord. You can tag me, and we can have conversations about stuff. Uh, I think. I think the, the chat and the fans are going to be very, uh, maybe not polarized, maybe nothing that extreme, but I definitely feel like they think maybe we made some missteps tonight. And I, and I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm, I would really like to hear and discuss it with people over the chat. Um, so if you're passionate about the choices that get made on this show or the things our characters do or, or how we are strategizing our mercenary company, um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it on Arthur's Discord. Just jump in there. I haven't been very involved in the Battletech chat because it's mostly been about the video game and I don't have a video game. So uh, get in there and talk about something that I could talk about and I'll talk about it with you. Uh, other than that, I appreciate everybody watching, uh, both on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, I enjoy reading YouTube comments uh, quite a bit. So keep those coming. Even if you're just going to trash us, that's cool too. I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, that's it. Everybody have a good evening good or afternoon or morning. Sid, tell me. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching. This was a lot of fun. I I I enjoy hanging out with these guys, and I enjoy the fact that Pondo's going to be walking around in a hundred ton death machine. It's also uh, a death trap for me, potentially. Yeah, yeah, but historically, you're the one that gets the kills, and <laughs> I mean, it was the case last mech, time because you know? I was like, compared to Axman, Axman was like clearing up with AC twenty. So let's let's just be clear here. That damage comes from uh, electrical feedback on the yeah, giant webbing that you hold on your brain uh so Cerebro. when you die it'll it will be because your brain dead and not because you're bleeding out of your lungs yeah <laughs> but yeah. you can you can still roll to eject you'll your... still be breathing you'll just <laughs> be dead. your vegetable you'll... body <laughs> you won't be dead you just won't be with us anymore yeah, yeah unless your uh, torsos get destroyed we'll recover oh. you and it'll be a weekend at bernie's episode after that <laughs> where we run around absolutely and... no no this is going too far way oh, too far sorry That's all right yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. If your torsos get destroyed and not your arms. 
Okay, that's true. Mm, yeah, Sid, let's talk about you. Uh, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, everyone. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, follow, and do all the things for Arthur because he is amazing. And I really want to see this this show grow and see more people watching it enjoying Battletech because Battletech is also awesome. But when I'm not here, you can follow me over at my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Sidalva, where one of these days this week, I'll actually be able to get a video up. Uh, I'm actually going to be on site tomorrow completing a project while completing another project remotely. So that's what's happening with me because I am awesome that way. But it also means that I might or might not be able to get a video out tomorrow night. We'll see. It depends on how tired I am. Projects on so, projects on projects. Son. Projects on projects on projects. And that's nothing compared to next week. So it's going to be very interesting for me. And then coming up this Monday, we've got more Can Cole with me and Arthur right back here and with Kilsa and Cotton and Lexi. And it's a great show. Watch it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And I got some new skills with my character, so I might not die horrible, horrible, awful death, but we'll see. Uh, knowing my luck, it'll probably still happen regardless because, let's face it, I'm terrible at rolling dice. And so there's that. So don't forget to follow me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, all those places, whatever, what have you, whatnot. And that's that's all I got. I don't get it. Mm hmm. Pay close attention to Sid's comment section because you never know when I'll make a guest appearance as a flat earther. Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> or let's just, justice let's just skip on to Pondo real quick. <laughs> and follow me on Twitter when I piss off people for just saying one political thing just to troll people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Pondo and Pondo the Mad. Uh, catch me on Twitch or YouTube slash Pondo Mad respectively. Uh, I'll probably be streaming tomorrow. So, kind of look out for that. Uh, I had a lot of fun tonight. It's I found it kind of funny how we like kind of had this game plan going on. So, all right, we're gonna get like a third jump jet mech, and we're gonna be like jump jet supreme. And I was like, there's no jump jets. Well, all right, now we're just like well, we're very slow. Death machine instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we're super scary because we have a clan mech, a hundred ton assault mech. We were planning on being Genji, but now we're Reinhardt instead. Yep. Now, now we, we went with the uh, triple tank uh, meta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, we've think... got the we've got the Reinhardt Diva Bridget. Yeah, <laughs> oh, pretty much. I think I think Rad stole a Genji that gets behind and gets the Bastions <laughs> to try to set up. Uh, yeah. I'm obviously the Reaper. I mean, come on. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Has to. Yeah. Is yeah. it like an AC-20, like a shotgun? Like or I guess Hawk. not, but... Yeah, it is. It'd have to be an LBX-20 to be That's a shotgun. A LBX oh, yeah, a yeah, yeah. I'll the take real shotgun are the friends we made along the way. Oh, I would take I would take Roadhog. If you put a chain on my axe and let me hook people... That'd be cool. That's awesome. No. No. One. No. It happens. <laughs> what I like about the axeman is that instead of being a giant axe, it's like a little hatchet in a giant mech. We no, man. We were talking about Franken-mecking. That's what I want. Just make it happen. <laughs> put a big long chain on it. Give me that Look, scorpion. This isn't Death from above. Chain. You're not going to be able to spray <laughs> mechs with cool Then Then AC-20 them in the face. Oh, yeah. that Yeah, that's what we need. We need the whole lands to be nothing but Highlanders, so you all have jump jets, but you can only jump like 60 meters. <laughs> Jump, jump one square, <laughs> one hex. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll just you. essentially hope that they get close enough so we just belly flop on our back enemies, pretty much. I mean, with Highlanders, all you got to do is just fire all of the Goss rifles they have. What if, what if multiple mechs declare a uh, death from above on a single target? Do they all just like jump on them at the same time? <laughs> no, you because you pick which it'll it'll differentiate where you land you could of course both land in the same square in which case you'll collide with each other and cause all kinds of problems can we do uh, but yeah you can land. you can it's chain like jump on jump people. in the air hit and then land could one jump <laughs> on it, and then the oh, super mario bros again yeah, yeah, both war hammers get jump shots you know? i like it <laughs> exactly it's actually yeah, one I... jump onto one mech knock it back and the other mech jumps on the mech that just fell no, back that's not that'd be awesome i don't know yeah. you, get, you jump they both jump and one like goes a piggyback style and then they oh, both God. land that sounds like a viable strategy <laughs> to me arthur that sounds awesome actually
talking about elbow drops if you follow this me is why we're Twitter terrible at piloting because we want to do the stupid shit that we can't do i'm sorry english i couldn't hear you doing your outro let's hear you again from the top <laughs> talk about elbow drops if you follow me at english mudkip on twitter you can see a freaking hilarious picture of a guy elbow dropping a crocodile in a river i will be i'm hello i'm english mudkip i'll be streaming tomorrow 8 p.m gmt you can come follow me on Twitch at English Mudkip. I'm also in Office Discord, English Mudkip. You can poke me or whatever and tell me about how bad I do at freaking playing mechs. Come at me, bro. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been fun doing this for the past good couple of weeks. And I really enjoyed. I'm looking forward to next week as well. All right. Uh, I'm Arthur Perkins. This has been AP Gaming Real, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, AP Gaming Real. Support us wherever you can. If you want to buy the books for this particular game, make sure you use my drive-through RPG affiliate link. I super appreciate it, and plus, it's basically the only place you can get it legally. So, <laughs> I mean, you you can buy the the real book copies on Amazon, but they're like a hundred dollars. Fucking crazy. That's it. We're done. Have a good night. We'll be back next week. Everybody good next week? Yep. I hope so, because yeah. we got that guest slotted in, and they can't come any <laughs> other time. So be back next week. Special guest, special unit, special time. <laughs>